Hola y como estas? Or hello and how are you from here in the north of England? Welcome to the Damp Show with me, Damp Sam, and him, Dry Gal. Did you know there are 27 million homes in Britain, not counting other buildings, and while ever it rains, they will all be affected by moisture or damp in their lifetimes. This show aims to guide our listeners through the shower of issues that continually pop up when you least expect it. We will give you a light-hearted, conversational stroll with some facts and stories along the way. Damp Sam is a re- resident damp expert in all things damp. I'm the dampinator. The Damp Man, the Damp Lord. Alongside me is Dry Gav, who is a resident sponge and all-round ordinary person, just like you out there. He's going to push, prod and probe until the liquid bubble of inflammation, that's information, tips, tricks, they burst all over the studio floor. Then you, the viewer, We'll mop it up with your listening flannels and buckets. In today's episode, we're going to talk about, yeah, you guessed it, damp stuff. So enjoy the show. So we'll start with main one, which is what everybody associates with damp. Well, let's... When they see it. Roll back. Which is... There's more than one type of damp. There's more than one type of damp, as uh, Dry Gav says. There's more than one type of damp. There's there's all different types of damp that affect your property. And we're going to jump straight in with uh, rising damp, but um, I'll I'll try and list them. I'm going to have to get my thing back out now. I'm not Leslie Walsh. I'm not memory man. Um, do you know who Leslie Walsh was? No, no idea. It's a bit before my time, Sam. If I if I, if I said thirty nine steps, have you heard oh of yeah, that? yeah, yeah. Leslie Walsh, what yeah. memory man in thirty nine right, steps? Okay. So when I say I'm not Leslie Walsh, classics. That means. Uh, I'm not him, memory man. Um, right, so types of damp. You've got your rising damp, which is what most people associate every type of damp with. So the ordinary lay person see a bit of damp in their house, a patch anywhere, they think it's rising damp. You've got penetrating damp. You've got condensation. You've got sulfate salts. You've got lateral dampness. You've got leaks from pipes, and then you're into dry rots, wet rots, wood boring insects, um, and then we'll we'll touch on basement conversions near end just uh, just to throw that in because these are going to be these are going to be subjects that we're going to do in depth each week. So if I give this uh, this overview, and then when we do as uh, shows, each uh, start at show is going to be concentrating just on one these subjects so rising damp your rising damp is dampness that comes up through the ground bit of a controversial subject <laughs> what's well, controversial about it, it. <laughs> you hear lots of things about rising damp don't you some people say it's not a thing there's uh, there's a lot of people say it's not a thing but i think this is this is kind of grown from riser internet and conspiracy theorists, so there's quite a few people out there that that, that say that um, rising damp is a myth and rising damp don't exist. And all I do is point them towards um, there's, there's a YouTube film that Graham Coleman's done. Graham Coleman is a um, is one of professors. At PCA, he's got every single title under his uh, under his belt. is is very accomplished, um, and basically one of these boffins that do experiments and stuff like that. Well, he's done a video, and it, and and I just say rather than me trying to explain it to people, check out his video. Rising rising down myth or fact fact or myth, I think it's called. Um, and Graham, he tells a story from start to finish with why people think 
myth, uh, Rising Damp's a myth. Yeah. And also, it sort of puts to bed um, a lot of contradictions that these people that, that's come out with this um, have, have kind of put out into um, onto the net. Right, okay. Um, so I'll, 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 I'll just tell you what, what it is. Yeah. So you've got these things called capillaries in masonry. And capillaries are pathways, it's a, a, a kind of narrow pathways that's in bricks and that's in mortar. Porous materials. Yeah, porous materials. So in your ground, you've got water. Yep. Um, that's that. Mm. That's stopped for some reason. So in your ground, you've got water, ground water, and in the ground is salts, um, loads of different types of them, but your two main ones are nitrates and chlorides. So when these salts mix with water, they're soluble, so they'll dissolve into, into water. And then when these salts come up the pathways and they kind of they, they go up like a wick, the, um, the water travels up these pathways and eventually starts to evaporate out of the wall. Okay. And when, when, if you've ever done an experiment when you were at school, where I mean, first experiment I ever did at school was um, you mix water with salt, make a, a soluble solution. Yep. You put it on a Bunsen burner, uh, put, it, put it on a stand of the top of a Bunsen burner, and then you just let that evaporate. And then once it's evaporated, you can see the salts and crystals, crystals. on cider um, glass. And this is what happens when your water comes up from the ground, goes up your capillaries, and then evaporates out of all. It leaves a salty deposit at that height. So, okay. And you can see this. You'll be able to see a salt band. Um, and when these salts are left on... Um, on wall in a line it's normally a white um, a white band of salts yeah the salts are also hygroscopic hygroscopic meaning that they'll absorb moisture from the atmosphere so what the what these salty deposits on on wall do is they'll absorb moisture so they'll, they'll look wetter right um so it's like a compounding effect now if you have a damp proof course in there which yep. is a plastic, on modern buildings, it's a, a plastic sheet. What about old buildings? Well, this is what I'll come to in, in a bit. Like, okay. so, well, what I'll do is, I'm, I'm not going to go into too much detail because we're going to do this on, um, we're going we're to cover it more extensively. Okay, scrap in, that bit then. In one of, yeah, in one of the shows. So uh, that's just like a, a, an overview. So rising damp is water that comes up from ground containing salts. And then it gets deposited on your wall. The uh, the height of the salt band is 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 based on the width and narrowness and length uh, of your capillaries and how much water is in ground, amount of water that's in ground. So that is rising damp. And what it'll do is it'll just continually spoil decoration. Yeah. So that's rising damp. Your next type of damp, which is 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 quite com common. I mean, I'll, I'll I'll say this about rising damp as well. I'll just throw this in there. Um, it is. For, I find it quite rare, um, especially in modern buildings. The, the, these buildings that that you've got in, I don't know, it, like remote places or whatever that's never had a, a damp proof course put in. And you you will get rising damp in them if uh, if there's if there's a lot of groundwater. Yeah, but high yeah, water table. It's it's not just that. Um, more and more, what I, what I've kind of seen, and uh, what, especially on LinkedIn, because there's a lot of damp damp uh, companies on on LinkedIn putting videos on now, uh, and a, a lot of them are, 
the water, the, the, the source of uh, the moisture, sort of water in ground, a lot of times it can be broken drains, you know, the, from your house. Yeah. So if you've got broken drains and stuff um, and, and that water's emptying underneath a uh, slab at property, that provides a sort uh, like a, basically a source of moisture, but, um, you know, a lot of water to, to be wicked up or soaked up warm. Um, but I, I, I tend to find that it's uh, a lot of jobs that I go on. It's, it, it seems to be quite rare um, that, that you'll get a property that's just got rising damp. Because a number. A number. Yeah. What a percentage. Percentage. It's uh, it's it's hard because what I what I find in I've just done I've just done two jobs um, last week and week before and I put um, photos and, and videos on. Uh, on YouTube, and what I've said is, it had a bit of everything. So it had wet rot. It had um, which which were affecting timbers. It had bridging issues. It had some rising damps in in small pockets. Right. Rising damp in small pockets. It had sulfate contamination, which were ran chimney breast, um, and it had some penetrating damp. And it, and it also had lateral damp because there were a high ground level. So properties that I'm going into, I'm seeing different types of damp in, in, on one job. Yes. And it's, like I said, key, key to, um, to sorting these types of properties out is, is good diagnosis. So y- y- your, next, your next type of damp is penetrating damp. Penetrating damp from, say, you've got a leaking gutter, that's dripping constantly onto a wall. That that moisture, that water, can penetrate inside. So if that wall is continually wet, if if it's a solid wall, it can sort of travel through into inside. So properties that are traditional, traditional properties, which are properties. For sake, I'm saying for sake of argument, um, the I'm, I'm just trying to think what they call what they call like heritage, all, all your heritage societies and stuff. That they put a, a a point in time where you've got traditional yep. structures, and then you've got modern structures after okay. it, and they had to they had to sort of come up with a, with a point in time. Yeah, so it's 1919. 1919? Yeah, so before that, buildings are classed traditional. as traditional. Okay. And after that, the, the clusters modern. And I think that, that's to do with sort of, not just to do with solid, wall, uh, solid walls yeah. and cavities and and just damp-proof courses because there's there's buildings as far back as 18th century that's got damp-proof courses of different types. And it is mentioned in journals and things like that, um, Architect Times or whatever, whatever they called it. Um, <clears throat> these mention a damp proof courses right back. I think what um, Graham says in his um, in his video, rising damp factor fiction. He, he puts some uh, some press cuttings from I think it's it's an it's one of Architects uh, journals, and the figure that I've got is eighteen sixteen. So so that's quite. Far back with damp so proof course. I think he said first mention what eighteen sixteen. So um the con so condensation not condensation, I'm on penetrating damp on <laughs> So these traditional buildings, when they were built, the idea of a traditional building was you built the property, solid walls, rainwater will soak in so far. Yeah. And then when weather conditions change, this this moisture that's in, in your walls will dry out before it Work gets out. to inside. Yeah. But what tends to happen is over an hundred year period, the um the building starts to weather. So you're pointing, um yeah. bricks might start spalling where you get little cracks in your bricks and then water gets in, and if it's freezing cold, ice uh, Turns to ice, ice expands, yep. cracks your brick. 
So you get all this over a, over a long period. So these types of buildings and are susceptible to damp then, um, gutters leaking and stuff like that. So um, so that's penetrating that, and 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 it's not just from gutters leaking. I mean, when I go to look at a lot of, uh, when, I, when I just do my surveys, I'm looking for where rainwater can drip off a, off a building. So you've got your windowsills. So some old stone windowsills, when it rains onto them, if the, un underneath them, there's like a drip member supposed to be built in. Yeah. So it's like a groove that's in, un underneath a uh, windowsill. And when water runs down, it's like a gully. To... No, it's uh, yeah, but it's like upside. It's on underside. Yeah, yeah. So when your water drip, uh, runs off at um, top and then down front, yeah, and then it goes underneath, it, it it stops it from going against building and it makes it drip. But then it can that rainwater can then get blown back against building, um, yes, and 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 can can drip and then just hit one point continually. <clears throat> Excuse me, but then other thing as well is you, you can also get sky dishes. So water, water really, yeah. So well, water will drop, drip off a sky dish, and that can be blown onto onto walls. So so you're looking for all stuff like that, you know, flowers baskets and hanging baskets, flower, yeah, hanging baskets. Even what about so plants? What about like ivies and stuff like that? Oh yeah, if you've got like vegetation growing up a building, when it rains. That vegetation is going to get wet, and 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 that area uh, um, where vegetation is is going to stay wet for longer, and it's going to yeah. keep that area of the masonry yeah. wet through. Um, so you've got like different types of um, different areas in that that what can what can cause penetrating down, especially with with all this uh, rain, well, rain we've had in today. Did you, wow. did you see it today? Oh, hey, yeah. I've, like, I've just been driving. It was like um, it was like being on a ship. I've just you been know, on out, motorway out, out front. Yeah, me, me, Izzy, and Mel were watching it, and it was like being on a ship. You know, on one of these ships. If you if you were out in mid Atlantic and all spray were coming, With spray coming off, oh. washing off windows and that. Yeah. Um, we're not going to set date because somebody might be listening to this in you know in future. A spaceman might be listening to it in. It doesn't matter, does in, it? In thirty twenty, he's allowed. <laughs> so uh, your next type of dam, which affects a lot of properties this time of year, uh, is condensation. Condensation can be associated with lifestyle. Yes. Um, certain properties are not are not well ventilated. We're starting to insulate properties a lot more and not ventilate them which which causes a problem and and the walls are, are are not insulated properly and you get flats that are made of concrete which are again concrete's a poor insulator so you start getting these issues with condensation forming on um surfaces where water vapor finds it hard to go through Water vapor will go through any sur any surface apart from glass, so it'll go through granite, but d at different rates. It okay. will it will go through, but it might take a long time. Yeah. Um. So you've got a condensation season, which is back end of September through to um, back end of Ma uh, April, and it's called condensation season because we stay in properties a lot longer. Do it darker, shorter nights, and everything. We keep his windows closed for longer, um, and we try his clothes and stuff inside. So that can be an issue. Humidity inside builds up, and then condenses onto cold surfaces. A bit like um, in a bathroom, you get condensational form on a mirror, which is uh, non non porous, um, and that's what happens on your walls. So. Your air inside your property needs to change at regular intervals, so you need cleaner air to come in. Your next type of damp is sulfate salts. 
sulfate salts are kind of basically soot. So uh, really, got, yeah, they're not. It's it it isn't exactly soot, but your sulfate salts are in soot, um, and your sulfate salts are a byproduct of when we used to um, burn fossil fuels on open fires. Hence, inside a chimney flue, it's um, covered in soot. And this is why you used to have to get chimney sweeps to um, to unblock them at regular intervals. Because if your soot built up, every so often, um, it had kind of set, back, uh, set on fire. I don't know if you've ever seen You might not be old enough. No, but. no. I've heard of chimneys blowing before. But have, not... have you ever seen any on fire? No. When I, were, I mean, this is showing my age, but when I were young, as well as kids going up chimneys <laughs> to clean them, the, uh, it, you'd be walking. I, don't, like, I used to live uh, on Cemetery Road. So we, I lived on Gold Street in Cemetery Road. And when you walked around there, it would just be weirdest sight. You'd just see this like, flames like coming out at the top of a chimney like um like somebody's turned a flamethrower on and they'd just be like firing out and firing out and they they had to get um fire brigade to come and sort them out because it could have set timbers on on fire that's inside chimney because it get it used to get that hot and basically it was people that had not had the chimneys cleaned out r- regularly they just let that soot build up and build up and build up, and then it's just caught fire on in, inside and at top. It's uh, yeah, just a weird sight. I'm sure, there weren't pentangles and uh, <laughs> could have been that. Witches black, caverns, black cats hanging about. <laughs> yeah, well, there might have been. Yeah, it is. Could have been there. Cemetery Road. <laughs> well, it, it, yeah, Cemetery One here, there. It's got a bit, of, bit, of, bit of reputation, hasn't it, Cemetery Road? Uh, well, what for? Uh, apparently, it were a, like it were a the crime hotspot of a Victorian era. What it? Police wouldn't go down there. I think they called it like Cutthroat Road or something like that. They wouldn't, you know, there were loads of people got and murdered. That's where I used to live. <laughs> that's, that's where I lived as a You'd kid. You'd probably been about four some in Victorian era. I reckon, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, you just reminded me. You've just reminded me of, um, of a story when uh, I'll tell these to them. I'll, I'll, I'll get. Remind me to mention this story at end because um, when I were when I were a youngin. So when I when I get to the end of this, just remind me to, to tell you this story. So um, so we're on sulfate salts again, hygroscopic. So these sulfate salts inside a chimney, if they, if it gets wet, these salts will migrate to the surface of plaster, and uh, then we mean hygroscopic. They'll absorb moisture. So they show up as wet patches, and they tend to show up as like a the the, the ones that I see have got like a yellow to an orangey tinge to them, and this is what separates them from different um, damp patches. So when you're looking for clues to what types of damp they are, I mean, biggest clue is that it's on a chimney breast. <laughs> I'm going to say, would it only be in a house where you've got a fire? An open fire. You wouldn't find them in, say, a, you know, a nineteen eighty. Well, I'm going to tell you something about um, about sulfate salts. Sulfate salts are quite um, mysterious. Really? So the the what's called hygroscopic. Yeah. So they'll absorb moisture. So they'll keep absorbing moisture, absorbing moisture, absorbing moisture till they full up. And if they get if they get wet enough. These um, patches. The salts are also called deliquescent. 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 So what happens is, they'll um, they'll evaporate into um, into atmosphere. So these salts can dissolve into really tiny bits of moisture, and then they can sort of go around room in uh, in in air and and. And go on to different walls. Right. So if, it, if it, that's it, that's if it gets wet enough. Uh, so you might see a chimney breast that's got sulfate salt contamination. Then you might see walls adjacent to it. You know, uh, in alcoves, they might have it as well. So they can spread. Um. So that's your sulfate salts. 
you've got lateral dampness. Now, lateral dampness is does what it says on tin. So if you've got high ground level uh, on outside here, your building, then these um, this moisture can move laterally, which is horizontally. So right. it, it'll 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 move to surface of the height of the ground level. So this is what's called lateral dampness. It's, it's coming horizontally, um, and you can get it. You can get that in bottom of a chimney breast. So, but in fireplaces, there's there's there tends to be no um, damp proof membrane at bottom. So no. it'll be it'll normally be like a, a concrete um, hearth or stone. So you get stone flags. Yeah, and. What people tend to do is they tend to block them up. So they block them up and fill it with rubble and put a gas fire in. Yeah. There'd, there'd only be a small flue then. So then you get you get moisture coming upwards, but then it goes laterally as well. Is that from gas? No, it's just it's from it's the from from ground. All right, okay. This is uh, I should should explain it. This is if it's on a ground floor. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think it's going to get it on a. You'll not get you'll not get it uh, on second floor or. or or third floor. Um, so that's that's your that's your lateral dampness, and when when you get any lateral damp, you have to you have to treat it in a with a different system. So lateral dampness is is treat with a, a waterproofing system because you want to block these uh, this moisture coming laterally. So you, you put like a waterproof system on because it's it's always going to have that um, dampness behind it. It tends to be if it's high ground level, you've got earth all the way through. <clears throat> Your next bit of damp is leaks from pipes that people kind of don't uh, associate with dampness because they, they just think rising damp straight away. But a lot of times, I get sent pictures, um, and you can more or less tell straight away if it's a if it's a leak from a pipe because I always say that. Um, the pattern of dampness from a leak, leaking pipe or a weeping pipe. Yeah, it's it's like an angry, <laughs> it's an angry, angry. Uh, dampness. It, it's it's an angry dampness. It's it's kind of wetter. So we where it's where pipes leaking. Yeah, it'll be really really dark. If it's if if, if it's a plaster, you'd get like a dark reddy color. Okay, and then. You get you kind of get rings on it, so sometimes it'll have been wetter than others, but this uh, moisture spreads out in a ring round it. Okay. I and mean, sometimes it might dry off, and then it might get wetter. So you tend to get rings round it. Um, we're like a really dark, uh, really dark color where pipes leaking. I mean, th this is like if it's if it's something that's weeping. I mean, if you've got a proper leak, you know you, you're going to see water. You generally know about it, don't you? Yeah, you, you're going to you're going to see hot water. If so it's, you're talking uh, sort of small. Yeah, uh, a lot of times, kind of radiators. If if you've got a pipe that's against a wall and it's I don't know, it's, it's, it, there's there's a pinprick um, hole in it yep. and it's just coming out really slowly. Um, but the, but they can cause issues. Can cause a lot of issues. Um. So for for sort of pinprick leaks, would it be add some inhibitor? No, you, I, oh, basic, sorry, not basically, inhibitor. There's, you, some, there's some there's uh, some there's some stuff you can get in there. It's not inhibitor. You it's, put you put an egg in. <laughs> they used to do it <laughs> like they used to do it radiators in cars. Oh yeah, no. Do you they? remember that? It's like I mean, I'm I, I'm not a I'm not a mechanic or no. um, I'm I'm. To seal a leak, yeah. Put an egg so, in. so apparently, <laughs> just Google that on your Google that on your phone. Apparently, um, when I got my first van, it had a it had a leak uh, on radiator, and some lad who I was working with says, um, "Put an egg in it." And apparently, you put an egg in it. Um, Where did you put the egg? Well, there used to be like a, a tap on on radiator when you lifted bonnet up. I think you, you put it in there. What car was it? It was a van. What was it? Um, Morris Summer. Morris. Morris. This <laughs> nickname for it was a... Showing your age, Sam. The Pacer. Because it was um, 
dark green and it had a white stripe running down the middle. <laughs> nice. Can you remember Pacers? Them sweets? No. You can't remember Pacers? Listen, there's, there's a few years between me and you, I tell you. A Pacer, I think, were made um, by opal fruit because it basically were like an opal fruit, but it were mint. So it were like, but it were green and, and then white. It had a white oh, no. stripe around it. Sounds like an imperial. They were horrible and all. Uh, yeah, you can put an egg in your... Uh... <laughs> Is that right? I knew, I'd not, I knew I'd not dreamt it. <laughs> it's, uh, uh, if you're far from your garage and you've radiators so you can put eggs in. Um, we, we, let me, I can I just uh, put a disclaimer here. Damp Sam's show is not saying <laughs> put an egg in your radiator. There is no scientific so... <laughs> ad- advice given. Yeah, on... yeah, just just make sure you don't put an egg in your radiator and then say, Damp Sam told me to uh, do especially it. Especially hard-boiled yeah. ones. <laughs> always, always get um, a competent person to give advice on whether to put an egg in your radiator. Um, what yeah. I've got to say about pinprick ones is you can get some stuff, can't you, to pour in your... Yeah, uh, there is the, stuff um, that's specially made for it. But what, I, what I'd say is you, you just get a, a plumber to come and do a pressure test on your, on your, on your system. That, that would show, a, that'd show a, uh, any leaks up straight away on that. But it isn't just that, it's, it's your water pipes as well. Yeah. So a lot of older properties, you, you get like uh, water pipes running under, fl- under floor. And they could, <laughs> and Joyce, I'm laughing because uh, we, you know, outside here, yes, as you come up, right? Well, they've been um, they've been building a house other side of my mum's, um, and I know him. I know a guy that's uh, that's bought it, and and I know his um, his brother who's who's done groundworks, and they've they dug an, they dug a trench. To put services in, and it came down past front to ours, and went right out um, to to where road war. And the idea was they did all prep work, yeah. And uh, the uh, the service people were going to come and fr- they they duck work from road to edge it. Yeah, because you they'll not do it, will they? It now? was it, this trench was there for a year, right? Open like open and yeah, like yeah, things on yeah. it. It's been a nightmare, and the the got it the. the They've they've uncovered it and then they've dug it out and then covered it, dug it out and covered it five times. <laughs> right? Nice. And each time they'd come back um and tell them it were wrong. So so they started off and it what gas company. So util- utilities would say when Yeah, but this this is an and ground worker where's that this is what he does for a for a living. Yeah, like yeah. He, he, they do this for different companies, but he he do, he works for a company called um begin with C is it co- cohorts or co- Connaught and uh, Connaught, Connaught, yeah, and so basically, gas thing went in, and then they put like a, a it's like a a stripper um, plastic material, and it said Connaught on it. Mm-hmm. On this, I'm, I'm saying it's a stripper material. It was like a piece of rubber or plastic, like a sleeve. No, because it was just laid on top. So, you know, if somebody were digging down, yeah. they'd, they'd, hit, they'd hit this thing. And, oh, and, right, before, and yeah. then they'd say, so, so, so it's, yeah, it's like so a marker. Like yellow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it said corn out on it. Yeah. So when they came, um, it, it must have took some pictures and shown them it, and they said, it's got to say um, thingy gas, uh, York, not York, it was gas company around here. It had to say them anyway, not the corn out. Right. So then, suppose it's where you've got a contact, isn't it? If you, yeah, yeah. So, so, so this gas and electric thing goes in in like a. Um, it's like it's like a long tube, yeah, black black tube all the way down to the road, and then they just put their services yeah, into so that, feed it through, yeah. So they've done it for um, for water, gas. Um, I want to say electric. Electric as well, and the, and and Virgin would the, Media would, would they put electric and gas together? They all went, to, yeah, they all really. It dug it, well, they all went in. So no fibers, no side no of each other, yeah. <clears throat> and then this this light kind of tube that they put in, it apparently it weren't big enough, so then they had to dig it up and, and, and put that in. But reason why I started with story war, and reason why I giggled and laughed, but, but um, when they had it up, when they dug it up, my water pipe. Is down there. Yeah. So this was built in 1961, this house. 
And when I saw it water pipe, it's just a, it's just a, I'm thinking, think it's 15 mil. It's something like a 15 or a 12 mil copper pipe. Yeah. <laughs> it's not. Oh, they didn't bother. That, that, that comes from road. Yeah. To, to property. It's, it's a copper pipe. Yeah. It's not yeah. that blue, yeah. um, what they call no. it. No wonder they keep sending me them uh, leaflets, Yorkshire Water, oh, saying, you know, your pipe start here and all this like. Um, apparently, they, they, they dig down six foot because um, frost do not go down as, as far six as six foot. foot. So that's the idea. Yeah, yeah. my old house, so old house that I were under, I lived in the 1880s. I've told you about it before. We had. Uh, I've been. I know you, <laughs> you have. Um, fella sold his house and then I think we, we had to go back. He says, Oh, I've, I've saved you a job. I says, Why? What, what's happened? He says, uh, Drains has collapsed <laughs> back at house. He says, uh, I've, uh, So we've had him re, re diverted the, the front at front at house. It's easier, apparently. He says, I put, put your water in through as well. He says, I thought it was going to be a small job. It took him about a week, week every, every digging to. Uh, to get to the front of the house, and it were only about must have been about less than ten meters or something. But like now that. they can put like they, they can they can run a they can run a thing in. Um, how did they do it? He now? had to I, get what he had and to do. A sleeve really, and, the, and then they blow it up. So what he did was he had to dig through concrete, which were drive <laughs> downside at drive, and then at front of the house under foundations right. to get pipe to get pipe up underneath. All right. So we ended up with water supply coming through front. Front room, and living room, which were must have been a nightmare for him. But well, you know, I've got that. I've got. I've got to get somebody to come to that um, outside. That there's a chamber, and it's an old toilet roll on drive. It's been it's been backing up. So I've got I've got a guy ringing me on Monday oh, nice. because of that. Yeah, there's no way I would lifting it up. And, no, you, know, you don't want to be in there. But I didn't know what's happened because we've never all the time we've lived here we've never had an issue. Yeah. Um, so. Probably Maui's stuff that's coming down at minute. You never know. Yeah, but there's only there's there's only this house and my mum's house on it. It's 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 it's, it's what's come out of here. But, yeah. But we let them. Uh, we built that house. We let them tap into it, and I'm hoping they ain't just they ain't putting any wipes and stuff down. Aren't they? Well, we'll see. We'll see when he uh, yeah, when he thinks it. You wouldn't want that job, would you? Anybody who does that <laughs> job has got my. Uh, I know, they want Victoria Cross, yeah, don't they? Yeah. And my old house, just going back to, you know, we were laughing about copper pipes. I went under our house, I had to do some stuff underneath. There were like a crawl space underneath. And have you ever seen Goonies? Yeah. You know, when they're bagging on copper pipes. Well, so it, when, when, I, when I say I've seen it, I've seen bits. Yeah, I, probably I, a bit, I think I'm the only person in Barnes that's probably like, a bit watched mod- it all the way through. A bit it. modern, isn't it? For yeah, for me, yeah. <laughs> but modern. Is it? Izzy watched it, watched it, and Mel Mel watched it. Uh, well, they ended, they ended up underground, and the know there's to... a bit on it that says "you guys." Yeah, the tra- Is that yeah, how he says it. it. Yeah, yeah, looks a bit like you actually. <laughs> None taken, mate. <laughs> um, right, so so that's leaks from pipes. That um, this is why this is why we said that you need to get um, when when you're having a damp survey, get somebody in that's qualified and make sure that they're diagnosing everything correctly. Because um, I get sent a lot of surveys and uh, kind of quotes from different damp, damp companies. And the problem is, as soon as I see that they said to hack everything off a meter high or whatever, or 1.2 meters high, and the mention rising damp, it's, it's got rising damp all the way through. Yep. That's when alarm bells ring for me. Um, I've never seen a property that's just got rising damp all the way through. Because like I've mentioned before with chimney breasts, chimney breasts is normal sulfates or lateral damp. It's not just rising damp. I mean, these are, these are school of thought saying that you can maybe call any damp rising damp because it, it, it is spreading. But when I did my um, qualifications and guidelines from oh, building research and everything, there's different categories of damp. So if, this is what we learn. So if you were if you were to go and 
go with first person who comes in. He says, rise and dance straight away. We're going to take all your plaster off. And, I've had a few, know, yeah, I've had a few like that. Would just, that would, generally, even though it's using a sledgehammer to crack a nut, uh, so would you... Would it fix problem? Yeah, and this is this so is, it'd fix problem, but it, this is I take it, it'd be considerably it, more expensive. It, 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 yeah and no. I want to say yeah and no. This is where this is where there's a grey area. <clears throat> if it's lateral dam, it's not going to fix that because the the point of the point of system up wall to treat rising dam rather than lateral dam, which should be a waterproofing type system, a barrier system. Okay. Same as sulfates need a um what's called a barrier system because they need to be isolated sulfate salts stop them migrating to the surface um and i like I, I could go into more detail but i think we're only doing an overview but um but this is this is why i kind of say each separate damp issue has to be checked with a different system so when we go on a job we carry different loads of different um materials to be able to sort sort them out so i might have a, a like a bag of natsem natsem's a, a a render that um you can mix up it's pre-mixed just add water to it mix it up and it's a render you can use that on um for isolating sulfates you can use it for waterproofing Concrete repairs, everything, and they're a Barnsley, they're a Barnsley based company, which is ironic because it's um, it's a fantastic product if you know how to use it. It's fast setting, and it needs to be mixed correctly. So you, you need to sort of you need you need to have had experience in mixing it. it, it it's a nightmare to mix, <laughs> to tell you the truth, but it's a brilliant product. It's um, like porridge. No, mate. It's 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 like I, I can explain. It's it's really gritty to use. It goes off quick, even though they do one that don't go off quick. It's just it's just hard to mix. It's just really hard to mix. You have to have kind of special whisk, um, tough buckets. You have to click. You can only mix a bag at a time, and one bag only does a meter. But um, I'll I'll go into that more detail when when I start doing um, separate you know each each separate uh, category of damp. So we're going to dry rot. So there's dry dry rot and wet rot. It's two different types. One is probably a bit easier to treat than other. So if you get dry rot, dry rot's kind of more serious, probably more serious. Uh, fungal infection that you can get in your property i'm saying that there's a there's a beetle called um house longhorn beetle um and that is a is, is a nightmare and it for some reason you only get it around um a place in cornwall i'm just trying to think what they call place uh, or, or that that kind of area, and I think thinking behind it is that it it came on one of ships, you know, like really it came on a ship and kind of took to that area, and because it we'd been a bit warmer down there, but it don't it, it, it I don't think there've been any uh, sightings of it anywhere else, especially not in North of England. Too but, cold. But what that does is it it, it sort of burrows into timber. Yeah, um, and kind of just ate everything all the way through on inside timber. the timber. Well, don't eat it, but he chews it all. Yeah, and, and then um, doggos it out in frass. What's called frass. <laughs> so frass. Yeah, it's like a like a dust. Um, learn, a, learn a word a day, don't we? On this uh, <laughs> podcast, and uh, it, you, you, you'll see timber, and it looks perfectly all right. But obviously, you put your hand on it, and it just snaps in air because it's just. It's just uh, it's just so brittle, but if they find that they have to they have to evacuate. If uh, long arm beetles found in a property, um, people have to evacuate it immediately. Really? Yeah, because it because they don't know it could extend. Yeah, because if if all tim you know if all timbers have have just been at through, 
you could just go through the floor or chimney could drop down or and is it quite common is it no it's I, I mean i don't know how many um ids there's a year of it in fact that'd be something to look up that but um no i don't think it's it's not it's not common at all have you ever seen any no well i have i've seen i've seen them when i were doing my exams to show us uh the show is like uh, pictures of it, and the show is what um, size of holes that it that it bores into, and, and things you know, fly holes that it comes out of when it's uh, when it's laid its eggs on on timber and, and burrowed in. Um, so you, you dry rot. This is a it, it's a, it's a rot that likes um, well it's. Basically, it's like a, it's like a fungus, right? Okay, and it um, it likes dark, humid conditions, wet, dark, humid, wet conditions, um, and if conditions are right in any property, it'll it'll start to grow. And you normally get it if you've got like um, you know in in subfloor spaces and things like that where yeah. you've got like radiator pipes in a cellar. Yeah, if you've got timbers in a cellar, if if you've got like a, a radiator pipe, um, but also if you know, like um, last year and year before, we had really hot. Yeah, summers. I do, and there were heavy and heavy downpours. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it, yeah. it was really humid. Yeah, there were lots of dry rot outbreaks then, and once it once it germinates and starts, then it's it's, it's quite hardy. So when it when it um, when it becomes under under stress, it turns into this like a it looks like a pancake, so right? It's like a, and it and then it starts going like a reddy black color, and there's a, this is called fruiting body, and then this fruiting body sends out spores, so yeah, as it becomes under stress, it, it kind of flicks these spores out. Nice. Millions of spores all the time, and yeah. So if so if you if you if you come across like an older outbreak, you might see re- red dust spores, you know, under floors and stuff, right. and that's that's one of the signs. Other sign is it smells like mushrooms. It's like very very, very strong smell smell of mushrooms. Um, there's a mycelium, which is like a a, a sheet, a, like a like a like a chamois leather sheet. Really, I've never I'm going seen, like that with my hand. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't see on radio. Um, radio, radio, <laughs> wireless. <Not> wireless. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm on FM. <laughs> Probably uh, what's the other one? Atlantic two five yeah. two uh, long wave radio. <laughs> um, I've got a story about a radio. No? I'll tell you that at another date. Um, yeah. So, and what basically what this does is. Um, it feeds on sugars in woods right. and timbers. Um, so it takes all sugar out and basically that decays timber. Most timber's pressure treated though, isn't it? Does that not bring sugars out? Um, most, well, no, they're not. Most treated, timbers aren't pressure treated. They're, uh, you can ask to be, asked to have them done. And if they are, they've only got like a, they've only got a small bit done. Right. If, if you, I mean, we'll cover this when I when I do about dry rot. But if you if you are replacing timbers that's been affected, what you have to do is you have to have a, a treatment called vac vac or double what I call double vac. So you order your your tree, uh, your timbers and um, get your measurements and everything. Order them at builders merchants, and then I ask them to be sent off for um, pressure. That, this is like pressure treating. Yeah. But what they do is they they'll fire um, this treatment into. Um, I'm trying. To, I'm trying to think at name. At, um, think at name. At thing that they use because they've changed it from from when, from when I did my exams. But uh, so they fire it in, suck it out. And then fire it back in again, so it's 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 done twice. Vac vac. Yeah, double vac. And uh, and then you when you're installing it, you any cut ends you have to treat them as well. Yeah. But um, but yeah, so you've got 
you've got to dry rot, wet rot, um, and then you're wood boring insects. So you've got hundreds of different types of wood boring insects, and one that that we kind of refer to in his reports and that, which is most common, is common furniture beetle, which is yep. uh, a lot of people call them. Uh, what's the name they call them for? Them? Woodworm. Woodworm. Yeah, which a, lot, is a beetle. Lot, yeah. A, lot, a lot of people call them woodworm. So we've got two, we've got two kind of common ones in, in in England. You've got common furniture beetle, which is, um, which is most most prevalent that you'll you'll see in a lot of properties, and you've got one called a wood wood boring weevil. Wood boring weevil, they tend to if 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 you've got like a wet, embedded joist, or if you've got timbers that are that are wet, these are like smaller. Like tend to be smaller rolls, but once you dry that timber out, these wood boring beetles, they just disappear. Nobody knows where they go; <laughs> they just disappear. So you don't have to you don't have to treat timbers with that. With common furniture beetle, you have to you have to treat all timbers. Is it, do you fumigate it, dear? No, that's uh, them. Them what they have in America. What they call them? What's the name of them in America? What's that? Termites. Termites. Yeah, they, there's there's a method where the the kind of seal all out. Put sheet the sheet then, house off. Yeah, and then they uh, they yeah. just. But they, I mean, termites. I remember Breaking Bad. They did it on there, didn't they? I've I only watched um, first three series. Of that much, yeah, so I didn't. <laughs> I didn't well, they ended up they ended up taking um, what's it called that they were making? Meth. Meth. Yeah, crystal meth. So what they did were they, they started moving the lab about. Uh, so, uh, but then they, they they got this fumigating company. So oh, right. what they'd do is they'd have three week in an house, and they'd, they'd they'd be cooking meth in the house while they were fumigating it. So you know when all fumes were coming out, they oh, right. they, they covered it. That's so a, that's a good idea. It is. Well, un- unfortunately, we haven't got termites in this country, <laughs> so you know. I think I think I've kind of covered all um, bits and bo- of a view there. Is there all that you can think of that uh, I might have missed uh, in a, in a layman's term, Graf? Not real, not that I can think of. Um, I think a lot of people just automatically, if if I was speaking from my own sort of experiences, you just think damp. It's either going to be rising damp or some sort of leak. Yeah, yeah, um, and but, it, but, it, again, I just reiterate: make sure that you you get it, whatever damp you've got, make sure you get it diagnosed correctly. And how would you know you're going to get it diagnosed correctly, Sam? What's your advice uh, on uh, on getting a contractor in? I mean, the thing thing is with damp is um, and systems that's been brought out. Everybody's got a right to live in a damp-free property, no matter what budget that you've got. Okay. So this is why a lot of systems um, have been brought out that are cheaper. So, I wouldn't I use that word, you know. What? Cheaper? Cheaper, yeah. What would you say? Less expensive. Less expensive. It's just my common side coming out. Well, cheaper. Cheaper indicates... Bad quality, in... is it? Yeah, when you say cheaper, it's I'm... cheaper than that. You can have stuff that's less expensive. Yeah, but I'm, 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 I would, I was talking about sort of on a budget side. Uh... Yeah, well, I, I talk about stuff. It's like diminishing returns, isn't it? You know, when you're talking about, you know, you can get a decent, you can get a decent car for X amount, or you can get a, you can get a. You can get a Porsche for, yeah. You know, you can get your family car for thirty thousand, or you can get a Porsche for, you know, what? What would it? I don't even know what a Porsche would be. Hundred thousand, let's say hundred thousand plus. Let's let's keep going. Yeah, they, they both get you from A to B, uh, but they both do. You know, hundred mile an hour, but Porsche will go hundred and sixty mile an hour and. You know, the same one's cheaper than other. It's, it's not cheap. It's less expensive, isn't it? It's diminishing right. returns, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. 
You don't get you don't get that much extra day for your money. No, well, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. And I, I suppose if you were talking about you know people have got different budgets, then. Uh... But what, what what I'm saying is the the the, the brought system. The brought systems are so that um, so that damp proofing can be done um, quicker, yeah, um, less mess and less expensive is, is your words. Less expensive, <laughs> yeah. So, so, so that's what I'm trying to say is um, you've got real expensive methods, which is traditional is it i take it traditional methods traditional uh, materials lime mortars and things like that but they're expensive yeah if you've got to start digging uh ground levels down and all that kind of things it's it's, it's going to be <coughs> excuse me time consuming which adds to adds to um so you've got labor cost initially straight labor away cost. yeah i mean i get a lot of people saying to me yeah it don't cost no. Get a labourer, get him digging, digging down, and all that. And it's like, yeah, but what about if you come across pipe, pipe work? <clears throat> That's got to be rerouted. Yeah, they don't, they don't factor all this in, and then they're going about putting chemicals in wall and all this. <clears throat> what in a negative way, or yeah, so, okay. But you know, everybody to their own. Um, you ask, you know, you ask a woman who was who was, who was living in a two bed terrace house who was on minimum wage if she wants to pay for you know all, all these expensive systems or whether she wants to and which is still going to do the same job which is what you were saying about portion that's what I'm talking yeah. about yeah yeah yeah. so uh, so I think we've, we've, we've kind of exhausted that now what did I say to remind me about what what can you, you, had a, you had a story to tell us. And what was it about? I have a memory. about Cemetery Road, wasn't it? Cemetery right. Road, yeah. Right, so when I was, uh, I'd have been about four or five. Um, I think I, I think I was five because it was before we moved up Mont Breton um, and it was after we'd moved from Gold Street to Cemetery Road. So if you're listening to this anywhere outside of Barnsley, <laughs> this is it. <laughs> Mont Breton's a village in Barnes. <laughs> yeah. So um which is northern England. <laughs> so this is so this is nineteen seventy four uh this would have been nineteen seventy two, seventy-three. I'm fat kind of five year old, round round about that age. Um, um, we, we we lived at number fifty seven Cemetery Road. And it were it were a nice house, so it so it were it were a terrace with a guinea middle. And you that's, went a, that's an alley, yeah, that alley. <laughs> so then you went in in there, um, and uh, there were it was a two bedroom. So we got our bedroom in back, me and our listen, and then mum and dad's bedroom one in front, which were on uh, faced onto Cemetery Road. Straight across from our our house, I t- I, I'm just gonna say I'm, I'm gonna gear a thing where it is like, but you know, Mal- Malk's tires, <laughs> roughly. I, I've well, you know, it's cemetery start. I do know, yeah. And that's, that's it's gates. about four hours up from that. Yeah, yeah. And straight across, there's a there's a, a like a, a little park in there. I don't know if you. Yeah. There's terraced houses finish, and there's a small park in there. Uh, it's like a, it's like a gre- a piece of greenery. Yeah. And then there's Willby Lane that goes down to um, Donny Road. Well, where that park is, so this is 1970, uh, whatever, two or three, we'd just watch Generation Game or whatever it was that were on. It, yeah. it was a Saturday night. Which presenter would it have been then? It would have been Brucey, wouldn't it? But, um, would it? Bruce Forsyth. Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. But we'd, we'd been put, in, put, uh, put to bed. So I'm fast on Frankie. Our listeners fast on Frankie. Knocking his heads out. Next thing, <laughs> uh, biggest explosion ever, and like, it's like what? Could, me, me and Alison walk up. Mother comes in, ruining her eyes out. All windows, uh, top and bottom, all uh, all blown out. All really? Windows. Yeah, all windows. Goes into the thing. Anyway, I just remember like my mum. Um, I, 
like to- toilet were on right. I just remember coming out at bedroom because um, they kept us in back, and I remember wanting to go to the toilet, come out, and she's like, she's sat sobbing her eyes out, like rolling her eyes out on uh, <laughs> sat in the toilet, like oh, just crying her eyes out, and uh, they kind of kept kept it from us. But I can, I just, I just remember this massive explosion, and this is time of um, IRA and and all that, yeah, you know, yeah, so, yeah. This is me thinking back. I, I didn't. I want to not realize this at the time, being five year old. Um, and what had happened was, straight across where this green is, that was um, terrace houses right up to edge of the street. Yeah. So that used to, them terrace houses came all the way up. A bloke's gone out um, to pub or whatever. Left his gas on. Really? When he's come back to house, he's gone in, opened the door, turned the heat on. And he's just blown it. It's Can you remember that advert? There used to be an advert, didn't there? Yeah, but that it used to happen regular. <laughs> yeah, it, I know. That's why yeah. they were an advert. People were just going out and like, oh, I'll just nah. switch gas. What are you doing? I'm, I'm going to booze. I'll just make sure I'll switch gas yeah. on. And that, like I said, that was smack across from us. And like when I think back about stuff that's happened to me, you know, over, over my life, um, obviously I've, I've got some. I'm like a cat. I'm, I think I'm on my ninth life. Yeah, already, I've, I've had quite a few, and I'll probably tell a lot of stories on here. But um, and I think that what first turn that went. Did he survive? To number eight. No, we no, didn't think no. he would have. He um, and but but funnily enough, them houses have never been built on there uh, again. So did it, it take full? Did yeah, it take it, from, full row from, out. Yeah, from 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 where they've wow. stopped. Next time you go past, from where they've stopped to. Um, well, to, to road, yeah. I think there were about three or four terrace houses, um, and it, it blew a lot up. Uh, but what I'm saying to you is, I, that could be, that could have been like um, I could have read what is it PTSD or whatever PTSD. You know, get it like getting woke up at that time. You know what I mean? Just a, just be woke up. An explosion. Up. An explosion. Yeah. yeah. So it's like. So it, it jogged my memory when we were on about. I think um, you're pretty. You know, as kids, I think when you when you look back as a kid, I think you're a lot more um, resilient, shall I say, than than most people. You know, when you look back over well, your life, I think. Yeah, I think well, that's what they say. Even now, I think you know. I think obviously there's a lot more care taken over kids than when yeah, but, we were younger. But you know but what I, think are, is... I think kids are more resilient than we give them credit for, aren't they? Once you start your life and then you get into it. You're busy, 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 and then, or most people are, and then you start working and that, and 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 everything's hundred mile an hour. But what they say is, when you when you retire, your your brain starts catching up, and you start thinking about all these things in your life, and 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 that can affect you, and that can kind of finish you off. If you start, there's there's there'd be a lot of guilty stuff because you're just thinking about stuff. And when um, we we've just had that time off. Uh, of the last couple of years. Oh yeah, um, I think a lot of things caught up with a lot of anxiety. People. There were a lot of anxiety. We haven't mentioned it today, have we? So no. we've done, we've done. You brought it in. You managed to bring it in, <laughs> didn't you? Yeah. Um, Do you think we'll still be talking about it in ten years? Of course we will. Yeah, because because this is our this is our. You know, they say everybody. There's an event in every in every generation. You know, I've had a few, me mate. Well, there's an event, <laughs> isn't there? You know. That you know defines a generation is this ours? Because I'd hate to think it. Well, I well, I, I was around when it was smallpox, so I had, I had smallpox jab, I had to have smallpox, I had to have measles, I had to have rubella. So you know what I mean? It oh, was just another yeah, one, isn't yeah. it? It's like a, it's like medals. <laughs> it's walk around with a, a chest full of well, an arm full of scars, <laughs> like just medals. T- what what so, were it with that you had? It was TB, weren't it? You had at school. TB, yeah. Smallpox, you know they eradicated that, didn't you? Do you know it came back? It's funny you should say that. Isn't it? <laughs> that they didn't eradicate it. No, it came back. They said somebody. So the, the, there were a theory so that somebody they think some governments kept it back anyway, just to you know it'd be an anti anti uh, viral weapon Could to use. Because, uh... And then uh, apparently it was just left it. Somebody's just left it. In a, I've, I've read it on a story somewhere. Well, somebody will... left it in a fridge. Well, the world got it frozen not... in a fridge. For some reason, they'll have kept it. To there will there will be 
these things, every government will probably have it in storage. Okay, so imagine, it's, imagine like they, it's next to your sandwiches. <laughs> You've got your yogurt in. Yeah, but it's but it's only like um, I don't know, British Museum here that's got all these uh, exhibits and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. Tape bombs. Well, well, yeah, there'll be some lab in <laughs> there'll be some lab in uh, down south somewhere, and there'll be Keith's sandwiches <laughs> next to it. There'll be a, there'll be another tub that'll look like a yogurt pot, and it'll be don't touch this. Uh, a bit like well, that's what happened in Wu-Tang, wasn't it? Oh, damn. It might have been, yeah. <laughs> Right, so I, I think we've kind of exhausted that uh, section, and I've even got that uh, extra story in. So, double stories this week, which are right. you. So, um, right then, Gav. Question on the subject and discussion, Gav Sam. Gav's fact off the net. Fact off the net. <laughs> what you got it? This is your. Net? This this is your. Uh, is it fact of the net or fact off? Fact of the, fact of the net. <laughs> that's that's what I'd put. That's how I'd wrote it down. So oh. for me to say it like that, so I'll just say it again. Like a fact of the net. Like a Gav's northern... fact off the net. Fact of the net. <laughs> and the fact that you laugh at your own joke. <laughs> I even laugh when I'm writing it. You like a northern partridge, <laughs> Alan? Nice. <laughs> Ooh. So right. So you're given task. Um, I give you some facts about precipitation. So because rain is wet, and rain is moist, and rain is damp, and rain. While ever it rains, I'll always be in a job. So if you're working in my industry, while ever it rains. You'll always be in a job. So this is why we're saying, you know, come on to um, preservation industry. There's loads of jobs. Come and join us. Um, what you got for us, Gav? Right. Interesting one today. First one, not all raindrops are made of water. Did you know that? Not all what? Not all raindrops are made of water. I didn't know that, no. Well... We're going a bit, we're swaying a bit left field, but um, on Venus. I was just, gonna, you know, I was going to say, you're gonna, on about. We're going, yeah, planets. we're going around, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it rains sulfuric acid. So Venus is the most inhospitable um, planet that's not a gas giant um, in the solar system. I don't want to ruin, I don't want to ruin your next bit. But I have heard something about that. Have you got another bit to do with that? About well, this? Venus. So Venus is um, it's most as as well as being um, most inhospitable planet. It's second one, and they call it Earth's sister. It's a similar size, but because of where where it is in in solar system, it's had like a catastrophic um, storm. So basically, it would have been more like Earth, but. Because of where it is, all elements superheated, and then it, it created like this ozone layer. And they reckon that in billions of years' time, Earth will be like Venus, and uh, all the gases have superheated, and then it's created a, a greenhouse effect. So, although Venus is further away from Sun than uh, Mercury is, which is the first planet, it's hotter on Venus. Now, there's only ever been uh, only the Russians are the only um, space agency who've landed a probe on Venus, and it took them years to get there. They were, they were landing them, and they were basically just melting them. And I think there's about three pictures from um, Venus that, that where a lander has been on because they can't photograph it because the atmosphere is, is so thick. So there's no that they've not they've never like all other planets they've managed to map the surface. They've never managed to do it. Venus. Where's that that rains iron? Somewhere right, so that, iron. That's <laughs> where I was coming to. You <laughs> spoiled that, that, it. No, that, that's why I said to you it. Yeah. So, um, and this is fascinating. When you think about how small, I'm, I'm really into like sort of astronomy and stuff like that. Like the facts it makes you feel small, doesn't it? I think we talked <laughs> about it last week. Uh, it's about 3,000 light years away. There's iron file, like iron filings, it'll rain. Do you know? On a, a bit like when I'm having a shave. <laughs> I, 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 so three thousand light years away. So traveling at speed of light, three thousand six years. Six three thousand light speed years. of light. 
six six million and is it six summit 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 summit? I know it's a six in there. They reckon that uh, they might be able to get a human object to go not point not 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 one uh, speed of light, and it'd take us even then. It'd take us these distances they're talking about. It'll take us forty thousand years to reach really? next next uh, os- next. Star. Stick, with, stick with telescope. Next star. Just, let's just have a good look at it, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Rather than go. It'd just be nosy. So, my next one is, and this is quite an interesting one, and I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna try this gonna one. Be interesting, mate. <laughs> well, I'd like to think so. <laughs> uh, shape and color of clouds can help you predict whether rain will be coming or not. Well, I, yeah, I, I think. There's a clue if they're dark, <laughs> isn't there? You know, if they're, if they're dark. Oh, well, yeah, there's, there's, there <laughs> it's is light, a bit. And it's, it's, light and it's racing in, yeah. yeah, yeah. So if you see a, cum, a cumulonimbus yeah. cloud, which are the tall, puffy clouds I think that's my favorite that cloud. look flat on top, or a nimbostratus, yeah. they're, fl- they're flat, low-level grey ones that you were speaking about. I've, I've, you can I've, be fairly certain you'll have rain in the next 24 hours. When you said stratus, obviously they're in stratosphere. Yeah, and I thought for for some reason I thought they were iced. Are they are they cirrus clouds? I'm not are sure. They iced. I'm not sure. Are not cirrus clouds that the wispy ones. You know the really wispy ones on top. Yeah. But when I were when I were like nosing for facts, um, it's not your on, job to be nosing. I know. For this facts. is why. I, but that on that what I sent you. There, there were about seven clouds on there, and I couldn't pronounce any of them. A bit like you with that one. I think I nailed it. Go on then. What's your third one? Your I've third. got another one. We're, we're, just... We'll just we're doing three precipitation facts because we don't want to. We don't want to melt overload everybody with we, we rain <laughs> facts. We want enough to we want enough to carry on for a, for a series. So, which? Let me start that again. Go on then. Rain fact number three. Yeah. Where has... That's terrible. <laughs> I just forgot how to speak. Go on. Which place... Fa- rain fact number three. Which place has the least amount of rain? I've got... You see, I've got two in my head. Um... Are we, are we talking on our planet? Oh, yeah, we're staying to Earth this time. Yeah, <laughs> oh, right, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why, got, which planet were you thinking of? No, uh, but I, I'm, I'm thinking there's, there's two because the 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 layperson in amongst us would probably sway towards some kind of desert place, but I'm going to go with somewhere what's like... Um, it's either Arctic or Antarctic. I think I'm going to go with Antarctic. Is it Arctic? You've been reading. Hey, I you've am. Been re- you've been reading. It's Antarctic. Is it Antarctic? It is, yeah. Yes. It's, only because it, it's, it's only because it's arid. It's, uh, your deserts are arid. but um, So it's not the driest place on Earth. You That's get... in um, South America. What were your questions? I thought that was what you said. It is. I didn't. I said, which has the least amount of rain? Oh, right, right. Yeah. Because it, it'd just be ice, wouldn't it? What's, what's coming? Antarctica has, I think it's less than 24 millimetres a year, isn't it? Well, I enjoyed that, Gav. Just make sure you get some good ones for next time. I will. Um, do, 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 do. So, I, this, this section is Damp Sam's old school site work. Damp Sam's tells a, t- a story from working on jobs in the 80s and 90s. So this week's job... Oh, this week. strap, strap yourself in. Yeah. <laughs> so this this week's um, story, true story, I, I mean, oh, always true, all, all, the, all, all these stories I tell you, they're just for, they're from when I've been working over years um, through 80s and 90s. And what you'll, what you'll find from these is that um, health and safety weren't very 
paramount back El- in elf um, elf and safety yeah weren't, weren't weren't very paramount back then in fact i'm i'm just doing making like an executive decision um and i'm just going to i'm just going to change this one from i'll, I'll tell you because because i've just started a, 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 what i think's a good one anyway so uh, back in eight, back in 80s i started work at um when I, when I left school, started not work, but um, I wanted to be a a, bri- a bricklayer. I'll, I'll, I'll tell the story when it's full. So I wanted to be a bricklayer. Money. Um, no, I, my dad worked in pit and uh, were a deputy. And I just didn't want to go down pit. I just, I just, there's no way I would go in down pit. Sound like Billy Casper. So uh, <laughs> that's what he said. I'm not going down pit. pit. So. I, Cares reference. Um, there's, no, there's no way I was going going down there anyway. Um, at school, we, we went and did a test at Barnsley College, and it was with CITB, and you did this test, and they told you <clears throat> what you could be. Um, really? Yeah. So so basically, if you got over a certain amount, you could do this. And this is where um, another um, thing comes in. So top marks were electrician. And then you got plumber, and then you got bricklayer, uh, sorry, joiner, and then you got bricklayer, plasterer, and then decorator, and it went and it went like that. So, so you had no choice. No, you took this exam, and what whatever results you got. So out of hundred, I take it if you wanted to be a painter and decorator, and you got hundred, you could still be a painter and decorator. Yeah, but if you if you were if you got thirty. You couldn't be an electrician, right? So we did these uh, tests. I think, I think, I, I think I said I wanted to be an electrician to start with because I just thought carrying a pair of pliers around, burning five pound notes. Yeah, so that'd be <laughs> all right. <clears throat> so found out that I could be a bricklayer. This, these are things you can do. You can be a bricklayer, right? I want to be a bricklayer. Spot with CITB and the CITB were in its second year. It might have even been its first year. Because I think year before me, it were called YTS. Um, so this is like second. Um, this is this is just second year at course, and they said that after talking to them, they would they would find you a company to sponsor you so that you'd go working with while you did your um, your CITB course, which which was uh, one year. It's like an apprenticeship, but you weren't there. Yeah, they 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 chose whether to take you on after that year. Right. Okay. So this went through all summer. Where I, I went and got a job at Lions, working there for summer. So um, Lions is a bakery company in Barnsley. Yeah, my mum, my mum, my mum worked there. Got me on. So we gave money all through the summer and that proper man's wage on seventy three pound a week um, to take home, which were a lot then. Um, but I decided I, there's no way I want to work in a factory, going go to a factory every day. I wanted to work in different places. That's why I wanted to be a builder. Anyway, I, I'd not heard out from them and it was coming up. It was two weeks to start at term yep. to, to September. So my mum rung them up and she says, what's happening? You know, he's, he's not heard out from you. And they said, well, have you got a company? And my mum says, you said you were going to get him a company. And he went, uh, uh the, all that kind of thing on phone. Let's just, uh, I'll, I'll give you a ring back. And anyway, he rung back and said, There were no companies for bricklayers, but we've got this opening for a plasterer. All right. So, so she's on phone, or he can wait a year. Yeah. And then do his start his course. After that, I'm like, I want to start now. I don't want to be waiting a year. So I said, What's a plasterer? <laughs> didn't even know what a plasterer did. Um, but I says, yeah, I'll, I'll do it, whatever. I don't, I don't want to be waiting. So anyway, it goes, starts, starts working for uh, this company, SMALs at Cuddeth. Cuddworth. Um, yeah. Um, it was called Cuddeth Builders, and then it got changed to SMALs. And they did all coal wood work. So they yeah. did. Um, they had a coal wood contract. So they did subsidence work and stuff like that, and I got put with plasters. Well, there were plenty of that about, weren't there? Eighties, loads, loads. Yeah. So, so that was mining subsidence. Man's have been a, a an ex mining town. Yeah, a lot of people's houses were sinking, weren't they? And uh, yeah, our walls were cracking. I think they 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 were doing um, 
they were paying out what you, you get a one one time only payout, I think, in your house to get your house redecorated. Yeah, that was it. So there were a lot of money about it. Just they? send surveyors out and uh, yeah. and then they'd they'd tell, say what what you needed doing. But this story kind of fast forwarded, so, so I kind of skip over the year that I was there, but you, I got put with plasterers. So lad called Neil, uh, old boy called Bry, um, and then uh, and and then there were some labourers, there were some uh, gangs of brickies. Um, the, it was just basically it was an old old um, style company. The 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 did it, they had everything apart from a union? But I think they might have even had a union. But yeah. it, everything was done like. Um, like an old company, so you know, get there at whatever seven o'clock, work until half past nine, have a break. Yeah, work till twelve, have a, have a break, yeah. then work till three and have a break, and then come home. You had to meet at yard, which were could have thought, um, and then you went from yard. You got in your van and yeah. then went to where you're working. Yeah, yeah. So I'd worked there all uh, year, and it was coming up to near end of, um, end of my contract or whatever, and it was summer, and the they were doing these conversions, farmhouse conversions, out at Ulton Pagnell, which is Ulton Pagnell. Near, Don, near Doncaster. Best name for a village. <laughs> Best name for a village. I mean, Yorkshire's got some beauties, but Ulton Pagnell's definitely my favourite. So so we were doing these farmhouse conversions out there. So we all used to go in one van. And uh, this one day, we'd been working in, in, in this house, me and Bry. And we'd, I'd been mixing bran in, in bath for him and he'd been putting it on. And it... And it it get it were going to end it there. We'd come out, and brickies, there were, um, there were, I mean, there were a rate gang, but um, there were a guy called Roy. I don't want to incriminate anybody now because yeah, and he's still around. Roy, um, I've seen his van, so I'm not going to say his second name. So there were Roy, who were a bit of a bully. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> bully boy he used to. He were a karate man and like judo or whatever he used to do. Big intimidating block. Well, they weren't tall, but they were intimidating. Yeah. Um. And, and then there were, there were Pete, funny as old Pete. I ended up playing football with Pete. That's a, that's another story. I fought Lock Park, and uh, and a few others. And they'd med when we came out. They'd med this. Uh, they'll, they'll point roof on, which were like old uh, slates. These yeah. these like massive heavy slates, and I. When I'd come out from my dinner, I'd seen them building this contraption out of scaffold, and they were building like a, um, a it, it were like a box. So it had scaffold, <laughs> it had little scaffold boards on bottom, and then it had like a frame around it, all out, made out of scaffold components. Yeah. Um, and it were about two foot high. It might be, it might have been a bit air. It might have been about three foot high, um, and and, it, and in like a a, a box shape and it was like a crate and it were on floor and there were um a scaffold on all front at building so this scaffold went ran full length of a building which was an, an old farm building and it was it was it it quite big it went somewhere like 20 odd meters long you know what i mean it might have been it might have been longer but it, it weren't mega high but it was like about 20 odd meters long and they'd, they'd built this scaffold up so they could duck roof yeah and then they'd built like a a, 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 a tower scaffold, but it were attached on one section, and and they used to and they had like a, a a pulley on top, so they used to like pull stuff up, but they wanted to do it quicker, so they they made this uh, box out of um, scaffold. Yeah. So you imagine how heavy it was. Like a counterweight. Yeah. So, uh, so they, so they've got this like um, box, and this is when we go in home. So we jump in van. And it's like, well, what's what, what's box for? I said, well, we'll we're going to see it tomorrow. Like, says we've got we're going to put all stone slates in, yeah, and and then we're going to pull um, rope of a pulley with um, what they call a dumper truck. <laughs> going to pull it, pull it, reverse it, yeah, and then that'll just pull box straight pull it up. up, yeah. I, I, do you know, like. Professors wanted me able to do it uh, as good, brilliant system, and says we're going to do it in the morning. So we got there in the morning, first thing, and they got it all set up. And me and Brian like says, "Oh, just watch them, <laughs> just watch them do this." Like it, 
is fascinating. So Pete, uh, Pete, what well, top at scaffold with joiner called Dennis uh, Youngman, he's only about twenty two, and uh, Roy the boy what ain't dumper gets all they, they loaded it all up with these slates because you imagine weight and the, the how, tide, much, how much weight are we talking? I, ca- I can't even I can't even I bet the, I bet they're more than a ton. Really? That much? So they were doing it all in one, yeah. one go? So it they been, weren't even going to test it? They so just it, went, about, it went about two and a half foot, be two and a half foot this, uh, and then three then And, and it was thick, thick slate, I'll take it. Yeah, but, but it was, like I say, made a, made a scaffold. Yeah. So scaffold, board, yeah. scaffold post, put locks, everything. Gets it dumped, didn't he? Puts it in reverse, starts pulling and pulling and pulling. Pulled all scaffold over, <laughs> every bit of scaffold over it. I could just see it toppling, <laughs> and it, honestly, it could have killed him. They, they, they fell off, <laughs> and luckily, Pete and this Dennis, they dropped in, and they, they were a massive pile of sand. What the way they'd been mixing, and they landed in sand. Um, and Pete ended up, um, he broke, it, I think he broke his rib. <laughs> yeah, just pulled all scaffold over, and. Uh, it, like I said, there were no health and safety back then. Like, <laughs> what did? There were no one in. There were no one. There were just you guys there. There well, were. Yeah, there were anybody. Roy was foreman, and Roy were on dumper truck, and it were like. <laughs> so that were it then for the day. They had to go home and that. And uh, so what were you doing? Well, we were laughing. Of course, you were. We were laughing. We were laughing. <laughs> <laughs> um, but when I say, you know, when you saw it, like just easing over. <laughs> Like chuffing out, but it, like it weren't that high. It were only like um, maybe two flights, but it went right up to um, roof. So we're talking about twenty twenty foot, must be. Yeah, twenty. But, um, foot. But, and luckily, like I said, that there were a massive pile of sand. What they've just fetched for, um, for building <laughs> and landed and it, and he landed in sand. Him and Dennis, like <laughs> absolutely. And, and I take it there were no hard no hats on. No, <laughs> no, no, no. The je- jeans, Je- jackets, jeans, uh, traders. Basically wearing stuff that they used to wear when they went out. Yeah, but, yeah, uh, yeah. But then gets demoted got to demoted uh, building, to, yeah, to building work, PPE. To work wear. <laughs> I mean, it went like now. Now you can have, uh, you know, you, you can go and buy work wear, but none of that. Oh, dear. So that, that was my story from back then. Um, One thing that... Uh, I mean, but, people get people get HSE at our time, don't they? But yeah, you know, one of the things that I wanted to just mention, Gav, um, about about four weeks ago, um, one of my mum's uh, cousins, I used to call him uncle, and that lived in Barnsley, passed away, and it reminded me a, a story from when we were young. That uh, we've been to his house. He, he lived uh, near Cawthorn, and he used to have these two um, monkeys. Monkeys. Two monkeys. When were this? They were like uh, this in late seventies. PG tips time. Yeah, but they, no, they were like li- little marmos- marmosets or something. So th- they were only li- me- little monkeys. Pygmy marmoset. Something like that. I think yeah, that's that one. Into it, there. That small what time it was. So the um, squirrel monkeys. I know they're quite small, aren't they? So we used to go to we used to go to his house and uh, and see him. And he used to have him. They used to just running free around the house. Um. Anyway, this one day running free around the house. Yeah, he used to have him just. He had a cage, a big a biggish cage, but he used to let him out. You know, they they were only little, and 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 young. Anyway, this one day he was reversing. No, the 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 didn't have that. Uh, um, just showed him a picture of pick me mama set. Um, so this one day, he'd put him in a cage. We we're going to take him to the vet, and uh, and his wife had he, he was getting car out at the garage, and his wife had brought him out of house, and she'd put a, she'd kind of put him on drive, and he were reversing, and he's gone reverse over both monkeys, so they're like a what killed him? Yeah, straight over with car, um, brown bread like. Anyway, back back then, I don't know if you can remember, there used to be a, um, a pet shop up um, across from the library. 
you remember? I it? do remember, yeah. yeah, well, yeah. They, they had a service there where you could um, you could get them stuffed because he, he decided they were that gutted. He wanted to get them stuffed. So he's gone in and he, he one day when me and my mum and that, they'd been, we, were, we used to go to the library regularly for a cup of tea with him and stuff and it was that day. Anyway, he said, I'm going to go over and see if we can uh, arrange to get Taxidermy. You know, uh, taxidermy. Yeah, how much, how much they're going to be to get it, get them done. So I went in. We, we're in there. Mum's here. And he said, um, we got pictures in them and that. And he says, I wanted to get these two, uh, my two monkeys um, taxidermied. Is that a word? Taxidermied stuff. Taxiderm- taxidermied. Yeah, I would say that's... Sounds right. Anyway, so... He's like so taxidermied. It, she says to uh, she says to him, "Yeah, we can we can sort that we can sort that out, no problem." He says, um, "She says, do you want them mounted?" He says, "No." He says, "He says, can you just have them holding hands, please?" This is what you tune in for. This is why you tune in to listen to Damp Sound for quality. <laughs> and that's a true story. That um, you know. They keep coming to me, these... Uh, these oh, I've noticed. I've noticed. <laughs> so I think uh, we're getting down that list now. Is there what else you can think of? Yeah? Not today. So we've had his, uh, his 80 stories and... Uh... It is funny, isn't it, about um, 70s, so your bad jokes aside, there seemed to be a a time, didn't they, where... where um, like rare breeds were just the thing where like people would just walk i mean it not 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 common but you know it, they were replacing Carlton. up near elsica that had monkey oh, like I, monkeys in a cage and i thought you were going to go on about him at um mont breton there with fire station where there were um a scrap yard yeah and he used to have a, a lion some pictures in him. Wait, really? Wait, really? Yeah, and wait. Another lion. Because yeah. can you remember there were, that, there were them guys at Arids, weren't they as well? They had they had lions. But he, he had. There's a picture. If you go on the internet, there's a picture in him with it. And that were only seventies. Seventies. It, it was strange. People had chimpanzees, didn't they? And, yeah, but I can remember. I can remember me like playing when we were at Mont Breton. Yeah. They used to go on about this bloke. There's a lion, you know, down Mont Breton, and we were like, oh, "Is the egg? Is the egg?" And, I've seen, I've seen pictures of it. I really did have a, yeah. a lion. Yeah. Can you remember that Scottish guy who had that bear? I saw, was, I saw a, a Scottish documentary. Guy. Yeah. A documentary about yeah, it. Yeah, there were. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Used, world. It, no, I think he pretty much stayed at UK, but then he'd taken it out in Scottish, uh, it might have been like Outer Hebrides or something like that, and, and bear, ran, bear ran off. Bear, bear ran off. They lost it for about a, a month or so, this fella. He used to wrestle with it. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it were odd, weren't it? Odd, odd times. It would be for my time, but yeah, strange. And uh, it were uncommon to go to somebody's house and they'd have. Well, it were it were uncommon, but people would have flight boa constrictors, boa <laughs> constrictors, and you know, ridiculous, odd. odd. Well, that's it, Gav, um, for this episode. Um, all that's left to say now is uh, having a. Fantastic rest of your week, however much is left of it. And uh, not all damp is rising. And it's a goodbye from me and goodbye from... Me? Are we going to do social medias, Sam? Have we done them? No. Go on, what are we doing with social medias? Visit Damp Sam on all the social medias. Oh, mate, yeah. So, if you want to get in contact with me, um, I've got a Facebook group called... um, I forgot last time, did I know? Uh, Facebook. It's a Facebook group called Why is my property why does my property have damp? Damp Sam. So if you if you search for that, um ask to join, you can upload your pictures and stuff like that, and I'll have a look at them and see if I can see what type of damp you've got. Also, you can watch any videos that I've done on YouTube. Search for Damp Sam. Um and if you want to get in contact with me. Just send me an email at dampsam at alldrydampproofing.com. So that's uh, that's about it, isn't it, Gav? I think that's it. that's it for this week. Right, so we'll see you on next one. And uh, please, uh, is it, is it, 
Is it subscribe to this or is it... Uh... Subscribe, press the button. Yeah, please subscribe and uh, you, you'll be able to hear it next time when it comes out. See you later. Have a good one.